The classic 1978 Michael Cimino film The Deer Hunter contains one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history involving a game of Russian roulette forcibly played by two American soldiers held captive in Vietnam. So the context is that Mike, played by Robert De Niro, and Nick, played by Christopher Walken, are forced to play the game by their Viet Cong guards. Now the normal version of the game involves a single bullet and two or more participants, and usually ends when a participant is killed. I'll explain the details shortly. But Mike and Nick have previously already played and survived, and they're now forced to play again, this time against each other. Now realising that one of them is very likely to die, Mike proposes an alternative version of the game involving three bullets, which he believes will enable them both to escape by killing the guards. And the plan raises some very interesting questions about the risk that Mike was taking and the probability of success. Let's have a look at the iconic clip itself to see how Mike's audacious plan turns out. We're going to see Mike propose the three bullet game. I do three bullets. Three. Three. We do three, huh? One, two, three. The guards look perplexed at this point. They wonder if there's something strange going on. Is he trying to pull some scam? They're looking around. Three. Nick doesn't know what's going on. He's clearly anxious. But the guards seem to be interested in this uh, proposal. They think there's some interesting gambling opportunities. Makes the game more exciting. Mike is signaling to Nick that we're going to be out of here in a few minutes. Now they notice how he spun the chamber. The bullets are in there. He said, going to spin the gun. So the first time round, that has to point to Mike. There was a 50% chance of that. That's, that's the first part of the plan that's worked. The probability of half, 50%. <laughs> They're laughing because they think he's now got a 50% chance of killing himself with the first bullet. For Mike's plan to work, it has to, it has to be empty chamber, 50% chance. 50% chance. Here's the, the critical part. At this point, there's now a two-fifths chance that there's, the next chamber's empty because there's three bullets in five. Nick is clearly worried now. He should be. He's got only a 40% chance of surviving. There's a 60% chance that the next chamber is going to have a bullet. Mike's reassuring him now. Put an empty chamber that gun. Oh, you got... Oh, oh you're going to die, you... Oh! Go ahead, Nicky, go ahead. Here comes the critical point. 40% chance of surviving. Go ahead. At this point now, two empty chambers, three bullets left in four chambers. Mike's plan requires a bullet in the next chamber. There's a three over four, there's a 75% chance. At this point, the plan is going to work to the extent he's going to use this next bullet not to shoot himself, but to shoot the main guard. And then are able to shoot the other guards with the remaining two bullets, or two of them, grab their weapons, kill the rest of them and escape. So here comes the shot, the next one. There has to be a bullet now in the next chamber for the plan to work. And there's a 75% chance of that at this point. Let's now take a look at the two different games. In the normal game, one bullet is placed in one of the chambers of the barrel. The barrel's then closed, it's spun to make sure that the bullet is randomly located when it's picked up. The gun is then placed on the table, it's spun round, and whoever the gun's pointing to is the person who has to take the first shot, and they have to pull the trigger with the gun held to their head, and we assume that if there is a bullet in there, then they will be killed. If there isn't, the barrel moves on to the next chamber, and the next player has to take the next shot. And this continues until either one of them is killed or it gets to the last chamber where there must be a bullet. And at this point, from a gambling perspective, the game's of no interest and hence it ends with neither player killed. Now the alternative game proposed by Mike is essentially the same, but now three bullets are placed at random in the barrel. So now let's compare the probability and risk associated with the two games. Now in the normal game, there are three mutually exclusive outcomes. A, 
player one dies, or B, player two dies, or C, neither player dies. So these are the, the, the bad outcomes, and we've got the single good outcome there. Now, in order to calculate the probability of these outcomes, we have to look at the specific events which lead to them. And there are six possible events which lead to those outcomes. Event E1, player one dies on the first trigger pull, E2, player two dies on the second trigger pull, etc. until we get to the case where if the first five trigger pulls reveal empty chambers, then the bullet must be in the last and then neither player dies. Now, the location of the bullet in the chamber completely determines which of those events happens. And each of those events has a probability of 1 6 because that corresponds to the probability of the bullet being in that chamber. And these are what we call unconditional probabilities. Of course, if we already know that E1 doesn't happen, then the probability of E2 actually increases because at this point there are only five chambers left, one of which must contain the bullet. And the, at that point, the probability of E2 conditioned on E1 becomes one fifth. In fact, we can work out the probability of the outcome player one dies by simply looking at the three events which lead to that outcome. Each of those have a probability of one six, and so we add them up, we get a probability of one half, 50% that player one dies. The events that lead to player two dying are E2 and E4. And when we sum the probabilities up there, one six plus one six, we get a third which shows that there's a lower probability of the second player dying than the first. So now the point is that Nick and Mike are very close friends, so neither of those outcomes is really acceptable to either of them. They're only interested in the final outcome, which is the probability that neither player dies, and there's only one event that leads to that outcome, which is when the bullet is in the sixth chamber. And so the probability of that is a sixth. So Going back to the different outcomes again, the probability of a good outcome we see is 1 6. The probability of a bad outcome, which is that either of those events happen, we simply again sum those probabilities and the probability of a bad outcome is a half plus a third, which is 5 6. So let's now turn to the three bullet game. The outcomes A and B are the same here, but the outcome C, which is that neither player dies, actually means something different in this case. Because a good outcome here only happens if each of the following sequence of events is true. First of all, the gun, when it's spun, has to point to Mike. So Mike is chosen to pull the first trigger. It's his plan. That is the first thing that has to happen. Assuming that that does happen, the next thing that has to happen is that there is no bullet in the first chamber. So Mike triggers a blank. The thing that has to happen, given that the first two do, is that there's no bullet in the second chamber, so that when Nick pulls a trigger, there's a blank. There then has to be a bullet in the third chamber, so that Mike can use this to fire at the lead guard rather than his own head. Mike can then use the remaining two bullets to kill the two other guards, enabling him and Nick to take their weapons and escape. So in this case, if we want to work out the probability of the different outcomes, we're going to use what's called an event tree. The starting event, which has to be true, is that gun has to point to Mike. If that's false, the plan fails, and there's a 50% probability of half that that will happen. If it's true, and there's a 50% chance of that, then the next event we have to consider is whether there's a bullet in the first chamber. If there is a bullet in the first chamber, then the plan fails because Mike would end up killing himself. There's a 50% probability of that because at that point there are three bullets in the six chambers so there's a 50% chance that the first chamber will not have a bullet. So there's a 50% chance that we get to the third event which is whether or not there's a bullet in the second chamber. And at this point there are three bullets in the remaining five chambers so there's a three over five probability that the plan will fail at this point. But there's a two over five chance that we'll reach the next stage of Mike's plan, where we have to consider whether or not there's a bullet in the third chamber. To get to this point, there had to have been no bullets in the first two chambers. So that leaves four chambers and three bullets. And at this point, for the plan to succeed, there has to be a bullet in that third chamber. If there isn't, the plan fails. And so there's a one over four chance at that point that the plan fails. And there's a three over four chance that there is a bullet in that third chamber, in which case we get to the stage where he can shoot all the guards. Now, whether or not he does shoot all the guards is the one probability that's much more subjective here. 
because it relies not only on him being able to use all of the three bullets to kill three of the guards, but it has to give them enough time and so enough confusion that they can pick up the other guard's weapons and shoot those as well before escaping. So I'm going to assume two-thirds probability that that wouldn't happen, and just the third probability that it does happen they escape. We've got five different events which lead to the plan failing and only one event which leads to the plan working in which they both escape. That's the good outcome. Now the probability that the plan fails on the first stage is a half. The probability that it fails on the second stage, well we have to multiply that has to happen, which is the probability of half, and that has to happen, probability of half, and since those are then independent, we just multiply them together to get the probability of a quarter. The probability that it fails on the third stage is a half times a half times three fifths. We simply look at those, etc., etc. And the probability that they both escape is a half times a half times two fifths times three quarters times a third, and that's one over forty. So the probability that plan succeeds is one over forty. The probability that plan fails, well, we add those probabilities up. It's thirty nine over forty. So the question is, was it worth the risk? Well. In the normal one bullet game, the so-called good outcome had a probability of a 6, which is 16.67%. In the alternative three bullet game that Mike proposed, the probability of the good outcome has actually gone down significantly. It's gone down to 1 over 40, that's 2.5%. And equivalently, the risk of a bad outcome increases from 83.3% to 97.5%. It doesn't appear that the risk was worth it. But it was when we incorporate the idea of utility of the bad and good outcomes of each of the games into the risk. Now let's assume that the utility of a life is $5 million. Now in the normal game, the utility of a bad outcome is therefore minus $5 million since either Mick or Nick will die. But the good outcome simply delays the inevitable bad outcome and prolongs their torture. Because they don't actually escape. So the so-called good outcome we had there was really just prolonging a bad outcome. So the utility of the good outcome in the normal game is really also negative. We might bring it down a little less than minus 5 million because there might be a very low chance that they get rescued by somebody else. But that was very unlikely to happen given the context in the film. Now in the alternative game, the utility of the bad outcome is the same as it was in a normal game, it's minus five million since either Mike or Nick is gonna die. But the utility of the, the good outcome is $10 million because both Mike and Nick gain their freedom. In order to put this information together to determine whether the risk was worth it, we have to consider the idea of expected utility. Now in general, suppose any decision has a good outcome and a bad outcome, then the expected utility of the decision is defined as the probability of the good outcome times the utility of the good outcome plus the probability of the bad outcome times the utility of the bad outcome. And the optimal decision is the one that maximizes that expected utility. So here we've got the game choice, which is the one bullet game, for which there's a one six probability of a good outcome, which has the utility of minus four million dollars, and a bad outcome, probability of 5 over 6, which has got a utility of minus $5 million. So the overall expected utility of the good outcome is 1 6 times minus 4 million, which is that. And of the bad outcome, it's 5 6 times minus 5 million, which is that. And so the total expected utility of the one bullet game choice is minus $4,833,333. The alternative three bullet game has just a 1 40th probability of a good outcome. Utility of that is $10 million. And a 39 over 40 probability of a bad outcome, which is a utility of minus $5 million. So we work out the expected utility of the good outcome, and that's actually positive now, that's $250,000. And the bad outcome is, is minus $4,875,000. And so the total expected utility is still negative, it's minus 4.625 million, but it's a higher number, it's a lower negative number than the one bullet game. And so that is the decision which maximizes the expected utility. And so Mike's choice was risky, but it was rational.